Welcome to Blockchain from Scratch. My name is Sharif Al Fouli, and this is a series of tutorials where we're gonna build a blockchain in pure Python using some very basic cryptographic primitives. So I think this is for anyone who has some intuition about how a blockchain works. But I think if you cannot actually build it from scratch, you don't understand it fully, right? So I have this repository in GitHub here which contains a number of Jupyter Notebooks, right? A Jupyter Notebook is just this very nice tool to write some uh, interactive Python. And each, each notebook builds on the previous one, right? So we're gonna build these basic building blocks and at the in the end, we'll uh, combine them to create a functioning blockchain. So today we're gonna start with zero one, where we're gonna build a, where we're gonna look at, at hash functions. Then we will implement transactions, talk about Merkle, uh, Merkle trees, about accounts, blocks, about mining. And after that, we actually have all the building blocks to create our blockchain in, in zero seven. After that, in the end, we'll also uh, build a small API so we can actually put our blockchain on a server, for example, and send it some transactions, some blocks, and so forth. For visualization, um, I, I, I wrote this block explorer, uh, and the block explorer is basically just a tool to look at the current state of the blockchain. So I can look at transactions, I can look at blocks, I can look who is mining, etc, etc. Right? So we have that as, as well. Um, if you actually look, uh, want to look at a block explorer for, an, for a working uh, blockchain, you can look at uh, you can look at Etherscan which is the most popular, I think it's, it's fair to say, uh, block explorer for, for Ethereum, right? So we can look at latest transactions, latest blocks, and we will have, we will have the same information for our blockchain as well. All right, so we're gonna, we're just gonna start with zero one hash and hash, a hash function is this is the first cryptographic primitive that we're going to talk about. is It's very very important um, because it has some very interesting properties, right? The first one uh, being its its fixed size. So whatever the input to a hash function, it could be anything, right? Any data basically. Um, the output always has the same size. It's fully deterministic so there there is no source of randomness every input to the hash function will always produce the same output the third property it's one way which is actually in my opinion the most important property of a hash function and uh, what i mean with one way is it's not easily invertible Right? So creating a hash value from a, from a piece of data is very easy, but creating the piece of data from the hash is very hard. Right? So going back is very hard, going forward is very easy. And the last property, it's, it's what I would call chaotic. So any change in the input will produce a total change in the output. So if you change the input just a little bit, the output changes it's total it changes totally basically right and uh, this this is what we're gonna see in the example that's coming as well maybe good to know is there are many different hash functions right I link to this to this cool website here um, many many different hash functions that you can look at we are gonna use the SHA-256 which is actually also used by the Bitcoin protocol. And it's called 256 because it produces an output of 256 bits. 
at your security bytes. So we have this function sha, which takes in a piece of data, a string int or float, and returns its uh, corresponding hash value. So we have this input satoshi, and this is the the uh, the output, right? Its hash value, and it's deterministic, right? If I run this a hundred times, the hash value will always stay the same. So what happens if I change the input just a little bit, right? So now it's not Satoshi, it's Satoshi 2. And what happens is, the first thing to notice, of course, the size is always the same, but the hash changes completely, right? So um, a small change in the input creates a huge change in the output. Uh, it's, a, it's a small chaotic system, basically, right? Then do we have some helper functions? The first one is just the creation of a random hash, right? So as input, I use here the time, and of course the time changes, so the input changes, and the input to the hash function changes, changes, and the output of course changes as well. So each day, each time I run this, the hash function is totally different, right? Then, uh, I guess I was bored a little bit. <laughs> I wrote this hash to emoji function, which takes in a hash and returns an emoji. I think it's, it's pretty nice for, uh, for visualizing the hash function, right? So hash function, uh, hash value, and it outputs an emoji, right? If I change the hash, the emoji changes. Then uh, we have two functions to print the hash in a nice way, right? So we don't have to look at the at the whole thing e each time, um, and we can print this mini hash, right? So we can save some space uh, in the output, right? In the end, uh, we define this hashable object. And uh, I did this because we have a lot of different objects that will have these properties, right? So transactions, for example, block headers, and uh, and blocks, and all of them have have this have these uh, same properties. Um, so this equal thing is for if you compare two objects, I I want to compare them by their hash, so I compare self dot hash with other.hash, which is the other object, of course. And if I create a if I create bytes out of the object, I simply return the the uh, bytes of the hash, right? So a very basic uh, functionality. Okay, and this this was basically it for the for the first tutorial, right? We talked about hash functions. In the next one, which will get a lot more interesting, I promise, we're going to talk about um, transactions, right? See you in the next one. Bye-bye.